Today we're going to use absolute value functions and transformations. If you haven't seen absolute value functions before this class, I don't think. I might be wrong. They look like a V shape. What we see here is the parent function y equals absolute value of x. And we're going to look at the stretches, compressions, and shiftings of these. That's what transformations are. So our first example tells us to graph y equals absolute value of x plus 4 minus 2. As always, whenever we're starting a new type of graph, we've got to start with a table. <clears throat> it's easy, try to think of the easiest number to plug in, and it's not always 0. In this case, the number that makes most sense to plug in is whatever makes the inside 0. In this case, that would be negative 4. At that point, we should choose one number smaller and one number bigger. This point right here is going to tell us where the sharp V is. Because that's where the absolute value piece is zero. So we fill in that table and plot the point. Once we've plotted the points, again, the V comes from the negative four. The V will always happen right where that inside of the absolute value is zero. The slope didn't change from the parent function, so we would say, if we're comparing this to y equals absolute value of x, the steepness is the same, but the entire graph was shifted left 4 down 2. What we're going to learn later is that plus 4 tells us that we're going left 2, and that minus 2 tells us that we're going down 2. But for now, we just observe it by looking at the graph. We went left to left 4, down 2. What we have here is kind of an idea for what we do on these graphs, depending on if the absolute value of A is bigger than 1 or smaller than 1. When the absolute value of A is bigger than 1, we get steeper. It's like our slope is getting bigger. When the absolute value of A is less than 1, it's like we're getting shrunk down or compressed, and the entire graph gets wider. It's really just the slope changing, which we're already familiar with. So we're going to graph these, both of these separately. And just as before, my suggestion, since we don't know the shortcut yet, is to say, what number can we put on the inside to make that 0? In this case, that's zero. On the other example, to make the inside zero, looks like we're also going to plug in zero. On both of these, we want to go one smaller and one bigger. Then we can fill in our table, draw our graphs, and then we'll make a comparison. I decided to do the part A in red, part B in green. We can no notice that the red one is wider, and that makes sense because our A is less than 1. And I made a mistake on the green. Let me fix that real quick. The green should be upside down because of the negative on the A. I also did the parent function with the dotted line. Notice that when a was absolute value of a was less than 1, we got a wide graph. ended up being wider than the parent function. When we had an absolute value of a bigger than 1 in the green, our graph was steeper than the parent function. And it's flipped upside down because of that negative in front. And you put that into words on your paper, and that's how you compare with the graph of y equals absolute value of x. got a bigger one to graph now. This time we're not going to start with zero. Zero is not the easiest number to plug in. The easiest number to plug in is whatever makes the inside of the absolute value zero. So to make x minus one zero, we'd want x to be one. Again, that tells us where the v is. You go one smaller, one bigger, and you can complete your table and then draw your graph. Comparing this with the graph of y equals absolute value of x, because the absolute value of a is bigger than 1, we would say this is steeper than the parent function. And it's also shifted right 1. 
and up three. And again, I pointed this out in the first example. Write one is given to us by this information. Up three is given to us by this information. And we'll see more about that later, later this lesson. At this point, you can pause the video and try these on your own, or you can wait and try these later. And now go ahead and pause the video, read the problem, try to figure out what's going on before we talk about it. Looking at this problem, we can see that the vertex is at 5, 8. And the slope from that vertex looks like it's going... down 8 over 5. If you count from the vertex down to 0, 0, that is a slope of 8 over 5, except because this absolute value equation is upside down, we want to say negative 8 over 5. Plug that into our format that we've been using. And we can see that we're going to say y equals negative 8 over 5 x minus 5 plus 8. We're going to see more about how to get that minus 5 and plus 8 in the next example, but if you go back to the example 1 and example 3, you'll see that that minus 5 really tells us we're going to go right 5 and up 8 from the origin. That's how we get the point 5 comma 8. That's it for this one. In general, translating a graph, transformations, in the form y equals a times f of x minus h plus k always means move h units to the right and k units up. If the signs change, if we see a plus sign there instead of a minus, we're not going to move right, we're going to move left. Similarly, on the plus k, if we see a minus number there, we're going to say we're going to move down instead of up. So let's take a look at that in an example. Since the graph of f of x is shown, sketch the graph of the given function. Part a says, let's take that entire function and multiply it by 2. So we take all of my output values and multiply them by 2. Instead of 0 being at 0, we still say 0 at 0. Instead of 2 being at 3, we have to say 2 is at 6. Because we multiply our output values by 2. At 5, we're also at 6 instead of 5, 3. I'm done. Part B is a little harder. Part B says we're going to change our y values and then we're going to go left 2 up 1 so let's see what that does to our points we have three points originally 0 0 2 3 and 5 3 that minus in front of the f of x says change all your y values so 0 0 stays the same 2, 3 becomes 2, negative 3. 5, 3 becomes 5, negative 3. And we have to do one more thing. We have to go left, 2, up 1. Left deals with the x values. So 0, and then left 2 would give us negative 2. Up 1 is going to make the 0 change to a 1. Left 2 makes 2 go from 2 to 0. Up 1, negative 2. Left 2 would be 3. Up 1 would be negative 2. Then we can plot all of these points on a graph. We got the point negative 2, negative 1. 0, negative 2. That's our straight line piece. And then we go to 3 negative 2. That's our flat line piece. And we've got our new graph.
we reflected it by changing the sign of all the y values and then we shifted left to up one we're going to do a lot of that switching signs to reflect and shifting on all sorts of different graphs in this class at this point you can try this one on your own or you can do these later other than that we're done with this lesson